recording. Now it's gonna get noisy. No! Get the bird! My name is John Polnick. I am your host, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, over there in San Francisco. How are you today, Michael Deeb? Happy Fourth of July, JP. Or did I give it away? Is it a secret? It's not yeah, what well, tell I anybody mean, what it is. I don't know. That's when we record. We happen to be recording here on our nation's uh, birthday, so we'll go yep. ahead and celebrate that. Hopefully, there won't be any big explosions. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, this is Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites we dig through them all bring a trailer p car market cars and bids mark shiftgate whatever we dig through all the listings to find you the most interesting car of the day a lot of people say well oh this car isn't as interesting as that car or this car is better than that car it's about what's most interesting not better so there might yeah. be some better cars i don't know that's that's uh, but this one the car that we choose for you today is the most interesting one because we know know better than you except right. that we don't we're kind of idiots don't take our advice <laughs> um uh and speaking of advice uh our predictions to what we think these cars will sell for when their auctions end is not advice it's just <laughs> our knowledge <laughs> don't listen to us right yeah. yeah definitely our good friend jason alter is in the studio with us today while we're recording what's up jason jason there he is <laughs> Wasn't uh, Jason wearing pants a few minutes ago? What happened? I don't know what happens with that guy and his. I mean, What's going just, on in that studio? Uh, you know, you take the camera off a guy. You know, he was well. The thing is, we had a bad battery issue, and he needed to go get some batteries for us. Uh, so he went to kind of the grubby part of town. At the Seven Eleven down the street, you're not allowed in there with Ew. pants. Yeah. So uh, he followed the rules, but he came back still with no pants it's weird it's a weird thing all right well let's get to the car uh because that's why people are here what are we talking about today this is definitely an interesting one not really? something yeah. we usually talk about and the i don't most... honestly know why you chose this because this is going to kill us on search but whatever oh yeah, yeah no but this is uh as far as the most interesting car no more so than this check it out john on bring a trailer offered to us out of um quebec canada is this just incredibly low mile and pretty rare for this era. It's a 1980 Saab 900 turbo with a five speed manual. This car has been repainted and a lot of the mechanicals have been um, refreshed. So there's a new headliner, there's new brake pads, there's new shock absorbers, um, you know, and a few other things. But, but as this car sits, you just don't see them like this. And our car has 27,000 original miles and it's basically verified on like a six digit odometer. Um, so we just don't see them like this. We, we don't see them. This early era of the car actually has really pretty lines to me. Uh, we know that the slightly later cars were really fun to drive. I've never driven one of these early cars, but this thing is just so cool. I love those um, really crazy wheels. What are they? The Inca style 15 inch alloy wheels. Um, that louvered. Uh, rear window cover in the back is very period correct. And the Saab 900 uh, design, I'd say, John, I think you'd agree with me, it's kind of iconic from when you and I were kids and we were, you know, trying to get behind the wheel of a car when we were 14 and 15 years old. Um, these were cool cars on the road that really weird people drove, um, but they're, they're decent driving cars. And I bet this one's really fun. It's also worth noting, John, as you get down through the bucket, there's um, a picture of the advertisement. Somewhere along the line, this car was treated to what they call uh, the Callaway bump up system. So Callaway was an aftermarket turbocharging company um, that uh, famously turbocharged Corvettes and made them like just all world beaters. Uh, but Callaway made kits for almost any turbocharged car that was in the marketplace back in period, such as like this in the 1980s. So this car um, with the bump up system, it included essentially an a fuel, 
uh, electronic fuel injection system and an intercooler and then all of the plumbing and hardware to go with it. Uh, so I'm not really sure what this car made in horsepower, but uh, I imagine it wasn't a ton. But I'd be willing to bet that that um, EFI and intercooler were probably good for a 20 to 25 percent bump in total horsepower. And I imagine that made a big difference to this car uh, back in the day. So I bet this thing, while it might not feel like a rocket by today's standards, is probably an entertaining manual transmission front wheel drive car to drive. Um, they're responsive. They're fun. They're quirky. Um, and I think this one's really beautiful. So. JP, would you spend the money to bring this car into the United States or would you just go, hey, really cool, but it's for somebody else? I absolutely love this era of Saab, no doubt about it. Um, that, I mean, you're absolutely right uh, as far as it goes when it comes to uh, it, this shape being iconic. There are few, there is a handful of cars that exist uh, that are this iconic. I mean, you've yeah. got air-cooled 911s, uh, mm -hmm. you got maybe Beetles, you got maybe a Jeep, you know, CJ7 or whatever. Mustang, uh, Mustang Fastback from the 60s? I, I don't think so. I don't think a You Mustang, don't think so? No, I think the Fastback's pretty iconic. I, I don't know, man. I think that could be con confused with like a Camaro or something like that, For mm -hmm. uh, particularly for the uninitiated. I mean, if you know your yeah. cars, of course. But look, you know, most people that know cars don't really know sobs either. Yeah, uh, right. But this, you're not mistaking it. You may not know what it is, but you definitely don't know, or you definitely know if you don't know cars, that this isn't anything else. That yeah. shape is unique. And this particular body was, it, they, they felt like they were cut from a single piece of steel. Um, mm -hmm. It has that same kind of click when you close the door uh, that an old 911 does it has that same kind of atrium feel with that big yeah. huge windshield that wraps around and that kind of long dashboard um, you know Swedes born from jets uh, right. these guys were really kind of out there on their designs and, and yeah. you know this car was a big departure from the Saabs earlier uh, that were really yeah. pretty gutless and underpowered this having the 8 valve head with a turbo actually gets out of its own way and is a lot of fun i've never driven one with this callaway bump up thing that just sounds totally fun to me right um, it's so cool <laughs> you know the later models of these so what was it like 80 eh, they started the the 16 valve in like 86 or something uh, uh -huh. so that that version even without the turbo was actually a, a really fun car to drive a little bit more horsepower than say like a gti or something of the same era you know it's that front wheel drive dynamic but it really you know, with the engine being in the front, but really far back up against the, the firewall uh, and the engine, the, the slant four, like literally had a slant. So it was yeah. really low. Uh, gave this car kind of that, that front mid engine feel that, uh, uh, you know, you never find on a front wheel drive car. Usually front wheel drive cars have that engine sitting right over the drive axle. So this one, man, this thing's, these are fun to drive. Um, yeah. But I do like the later ones better, but this car, low miles, uh, right. In amazing condition with all these cool Peri Correct doodads. Uh, I'm excited about this. It's not a car that I would necessarily want to own. The cars in the background in the photos, you know, there's the SPGs. Uh, yeah. That's really more my jam. Um, yeah. But uh, boy, this thing would just slay at uh, Radwood, right? Yeah. That interior looks mint. It's interesting. Yeah. The engine compartment is not as tidy. It doesn't look like it's been kept up as well. Um, the car has been repainted. So the exterior of the car is fine. The engine compartment's a little dirty. You could probably clean it up but the interior it looks it looks cherry on the inside uh and i think with that um that little uh period correct uh in-house mod with the callaway bump up system this thing's probably a hoot again yeah, look at that uh, little scoop right there on the intercooler in between the fog lights i don't know if you guys can see that that's hilarious yeah it's yeah, just so awesome, awesome man I know. I, I just, I love this thing. They weren't big horsepower. Let's say it's 150 horsepower, but because it's turbo, it probably makes 150 pound foot of torque and they will get out of their own way. This is probably a fun car to drive. You're never going to keep up with the 911. Uh, but if you had a third car in the garage, it'd be neat. If it was one of these, I think you'd enjoy driving it for what it is. Um, and this one, uh, I think the only thing against it is that it's in Canada and will need to be brought down into the United States. If you uh, live down here with us, um, but I think it still could be a bright high water mark for an early 900 on BAT. And so I'm excited to see where this one ends. And this one's not going to end for quite a while. Uh, John, this, this car won't close until Sunday. So it's six days out from us. 
What's going on with this car, uh, car's owner? I mean, I'm looking at this garage, and this is like a dream Saab garage. He's already got, he's got a Saab turbo, he's got an SPG, uh, and he's got this 900 turbo. Uh, why would you get rid of this thing? What, I yeah. mean, if you're a Saab guy, why why would you let this go? This is I know it's a private party car. I would hang on to Saab's that one. There is, yeah. I, yeah. I just I don't know what you could possibly get. I mean, maybe he's making room for a really cool Sonnet or something like that. I don't know. Uh, this is going to be a tough one to gauge prices. Totally. Saab 900s um, <laughs> have languished in value. I mean, they are. They have been worthless for so long. The SPGs right. are starting to come up, and you've seen some like rare, clean ones. But you know, looking around the internet, you can still find older ones with a bunch of miles that are in decent shape for not a lot of money. Um, but this, well, I, yeah, I, I think I might know more than the average bearer about Sobs. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you I'm do. certainly not a Sob 900 expert, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> You know, even I am really going to be, I'm stumped on this. Where do you yeah. think this is going to land? <laughs> Bid nerds, the Saab apologists. <laughs> <laughs> so JP, it's the, it, I, it, again, it's worth noting this car doesn't close for six days. So at the moment, John, what we're looking at is car is sitting currently at $12,000 on just six bids, but it, it only just came on the market like a day ago. I'm going to go way out on a I, and I don't expect you to follow me out on the plank, but I'm going to walk way over the shark infested waters and say that because of the interior, because of the low miles, because of the condition and just the overall rarity, even the ones we talk about with high miles, uh, they just don't come up that often, you know? So I, I think this car has the opportunity to set. It's possible that it'll set a high water mark. Uh, and so I just want to cover it if that happens. So I'm going to say $27,000, but there is nothing there is no evidence to support my uh, outrageous claim that this car is going to bring every single dollar. Um, this car is more likely to sell under 20 grand. But I, if one is going to break the bank, it's going to be this one because uh, it's the nicest one I've seen come along. And we've been doing this now uh, well over a year, John. So uh, to celebrate our anniversary, I'm going to say $27,000 on this ridiculously rare Saab 900 Turbo from 1980. Generally, I don't think you know what you're talking about, but on this one, uh, you might be just dumbing into it because uh, <laughs> exactly. I, I, I'm with for. you, man. I look anything, anything from the '80s with this few miles and this kind of, um, you know, period correct, just awesomeness, uh, just has the potential. Now, I, I, I think it's. You know, maybe the seller should have, tr with anything else, with like maybe a BMW or a Porsche or any other enthusiast car, I would have said, you know, a year ago or six months ago was probably the high uh, top of, of this of the market. And maybe we're going to see a little cool off. Um, but this car might be the right car at the right time. I don't think mm -hmm. sobs have been catching on until right the F now. Uh, we're yeah. in an era where everything cool um, that you could have gotten inexpensively, uh, you know, an E36 M3 used to be a ten, fifteen thousand dollar car yeah. for for the nicest one there was. 911 SCs used to be thirty five thousand bucks. Now they're you know fifty. Um, <laughs> so people are That's looking special. around for you know where to park their. They want a cool enthusiast car. They want something that's fun to drive and and something that's maybe a little different. You know how often, how many times you go to a Cars and Coffee, uh, you know, and in LA. Everyone has a 911 in our sure. world, 911, some bespoke yeah. thing that's, you know, singer or whatever. So it's really hard to stand out even with hundred or 200 or $300,000 air-cooled 911s. Isn't um, that something true? Something like this, you roll into a Cars and Coffee with yeah. this goofy little Swede and, you know, all the, everyone's going to run, they're just going to, they're going to pass right by the expensive stuff and they're going to come over and uh, this is, so uh, yeah. So true. That's a hot take, Dippy. You're, you're absolutely right. This is a head-turning car. Uh, and again, these earlier ones, like the louvers and the thick kind of come back, the uh, ink of the wheels, I mean, it really does stand out. And, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. It's a shame the seller didn't um, do a better job prepping this car for images. If he would have steam cleaned that uh, engine compartment and hired a photographer, uh, I, my bid would would have maybe a little bit of a foundation underneath it. But uh, anyways, we'll just sort of, this guy's rolling the dice. We're going to see what he 
he comes up snake eyes or if he makes some money. Well, my prediction is uh, I'm going to go higher than you. I'm going to say 30. I'm gonna oh, Maria. wow. Look at you. Has potential That's to really crazy. Nuts. Um, I and rarely I draw too. you out of your out of your shell, yeah. my friend. That's pretty funny. Okay, good, good take. Oh, well, we'll see what happens. Card there. To be worth a bunch of money, because um, <laughs> I mean, look, I've seen some SPGs go in the high twenties. Um, yeah, and they had a bunch of and they had a s ton of miles on them. So something right. like this. I mean, it's not an SPG, but I think it's in a lot of ways cooler. So um, I agree. All right, guys. Well, what do you think this car is going to sell for? Tell us in the comments below. Uh, and before we go to our commercial break and uh, see if you're right, right after this. Okay, guys, I want to tell you about Vegas Auto Fest. The drivers are coming. This is one of our big sponsors. It's the biggest car show of the year in Las Vegas. It's one of the coolest car shows you can possibly experience anywhere. If you haven't made plans to be part of Vegas Auto Fest on September 17th, then do it now. Go to VegasAutoFest.com and register your car. You think you're a car enthusiast? Doesn't matter where you live. Plan a trip to Vegas on September 17th and come out and see this show. It's like Monterey Car Week all in a day. Have you ever been to the Quail? Have you ever been to Works Reunion? Have you ever been to Amelia Island? All those car shows are amazing and great. Have you been to Luftkult? Sure, but Vegas Auto Fest is something special. Make a plan for September 17th. We'll see you in Vegas. All right, guys, welcome back to the Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. We pick the most interesting car of the day, talk about it, make a prediction as what we think we, uh, that the auction will sell. I, I always flub that. We got to come up with a better... <laughs> I, I say we as if you have anything to do with what I say. Um, I just woke up. <laughs> yeah. You guys, we record this show. We do little or no prep. Um, we aren't <laughs> experts in any way. We don't know what we're doing. And apparently English is a second language. Uh, totally. Of which I don't have another, but whatever. I'm going to go with that. We make a prediction as to what we think the car will bring on its respective auction. Now, the cars don't always bring anything. Sometimes right. auctions fail to sell, so I feel like I've got to come up with a better way to say all of that in a more succinct way. But, hey, welcome back. You just, uh, you, you don't know, you're sitting there at home, you just watched us blather on for 20 minutes about a stupid old sub, and then saw a commercial probably for Vegas Auto Fest. So make sure you subscribe, uh, uh, make sure you sign up for Vegas Auto Fest this year. But, you know, now you're coming back and you're like, what is this guy talking about? I, it's like you're starting over, and that's where we are. We are start, it is a week from when we you just you just saw us seconds ago it's been a week all right yeah we didn't just change our hats we just made the jump to light speed like it's a different day you are you are a traveler uh in the you are a time traveler we are just like <laughs> here for you all right so yeah we just talked about this really really cool sob let's let's get to the bottom of this thing how much did this sob auction for what, what happened what well, it's funny GP, if my memory is certainly correct we kind of criticized uh like the sob market a little bit like we liked the car but we wondered but then we kind of hit high right so i said i said twenty seven thousand dollars and to my surprise, you took the over at 30, and our car sold on Bring a Trailer for just $25,500, and it was on 28 bids. So it got pretty good action. And I, I don't know, JP, I would think that's kind of all the money for this car. The 80 Saab um, don't have a, a big secondary market, but for those that appreciate how cool the car is, I'd say this is a treasure. So... Maybe it wasn't well sold, but it was definitely well bought. I can't think of that many other cool cars you could get for that kind of money. So congratulations to the buyer. And, uh, you know, maybe when he sells it, these cars may open and get 40 grand for it today. But really nice car and really well bought, in my opinion. This car, uh, you know, I bid pretty high, maybe because I have a love for these um, mm -hmm. you know, I was thinking maybe people will get pretty excited. And one thing I don't remember, I don't recall, did you guys can tell us in the comments? Cause you just saw the front side of the show. <laughs> like I said, it was a week ago for us. And we talked about 10 other cars. Um, 
<laughs> Did we talk about the fact that this is in Canada? Is this car in Canada? It's got a Canadian. It name. is. You know, yeah, it is in I Canada. Did, I did not take that into consideration when I made my bid. Um, and I, I, you know, because looking at the results for this, I was going, God, what, what was I smoking? That's, I mean, I was, I'm out of my mind. But I, now that I see that this was a Canadian car, I think, I think my bid and your bid too, uh, both of us were high on this one. Um, I think we were both. Uh, in line here. I think if this car were in California or somewhere stateside uh, and still in this you know great condition, I think the car would easily have brought closer to your bid or maybe maybe I would have even won. Um, 25 grand uh, and you got to bring it in to the country, which is a pain in the ass, um, I think is I think supports our our aggressive uh, take on this car. What do you think? Yeah, I think so too. I, I know for a fact I hammered home the idea that this car was low models and had that Callaway, that period correct Callaway turbo upgrade. Um, but I probably forgot to mention, uh, which, which is out of the protocol to show that this car is in Quebec, Canada. And so, yeah, I agree with you that uh, the numbers are in line with uh, if the car were already stateside. So, you know, that's, that's, that's still all the money. And I still yeah. think there's more car there than the than the dollars you're you're laying out this is still a, a sweet deal for sure now you were at uh you went to redwood over the weekend didn't you between i the time did you made this prediction i did the time you guys are seeing I us did. right now did you see yeah. any of these not like that no there were a couple of cool saw but what i tell you man Radwood has a Volvo following like no other. Um, you and I have done some of the driving while awesome rallies. You know, there's a couple of Volvos. One of them's got like a NASCAR engine in it. All those cars were there. So there were there were easily two dozen really cool Volvos uh, with engine swaps and, and otherwise. Uh, but there were a couple of cool subs, but nothing like this. Not like this early 800 turbo. This, this car is really unique, even in a 400 car show like Radwood. Hey, it's our producer, Patootie. What do you think, Patootie? Patootie likes the sob. I think she'd look good in that car. Um, all right, so Swedes are, Swedes are back. Swedes are making a comeback. Um, That's good. right. Great. Tell us what you guys think about this car in the comments below. We sure like to hear what your opinions of both the car and us are. I'm sure that your opinions of us as hosts of this show will not be as good as your opinions of this awesome car. Uh, but we want to hear it anyway. Um, thanks for hanging out for another Bid Nerds. Make sure you hit the subscribe, like, and notification button if you haven't already. Michael Deeb, anything else you want to say uh, before we close out this bid nerds? Nope. Thank you, Petiti. All right, guys. We will see you tomorrow if I have the right. No! Get those nerds!